So priests, of course, in the rectory and the monastery, they have their <clears throat> they have their own rooms, and this is actually the door to his room, which you can actually see on the other side. It's just a very simple room. What really struck me were his shoes. They were so so big. But anyway, it's it's um. I just wish they had them in English because everything is in Italian. It's just very nice that there's this couple from Malta who's like translating a bit of stuff for us. Very kind. So what Padre Pio was really known for, at least from what I remember, is that he had a stigmata. You know, like it's like Jesus when he was crucified on the cross and he had those wounds right here in his palms. And Padre Pio had them as well. Even if he wasn't crucified on the cross, they just appeared. So he had them in both hands. And um, so they're showing like different photos here in his museum. Just whenever he'd celebrate mass, you can see like his bloody palms. Wow. With that machine over there, you can actually get to listen to the sound of his voice. Um, once again, I wish you could understand, but at least it's, it's kind of like when you see a photo of a person and um, whether they're on, whether you see a photo of them on Instagram or from ancient history, you always try to familiarize yourself by hoping to hear the sound of their voice. And it's actually nice to make it more make it more tangible hearing the sound of Father Pio's voice. So imagine him having to celebrate mass or or hearing your confession. So you can see right there, like Padre Pio had the stigmata not just on his hands but also on his feet. And that's him like reading all the letters that we saw in the museum. So many letters hoping to intercede. And I'm sure that he did. I'm sure that he did. And we are nearing the crypt. We are nearing his remains. So of course inside the main chapel where it's really, really cold because the remains of Padre P are there. Um, it, 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 it's so unreal because he looks like a wax figure, but he's alive and those are his remains. And his face looks exactly like that. It looks exactly like that. The only difference is his hands, um, they've, I guess, I wouldn't say decayed a little bit, but they're more like bone and, and, and um, old flesh, and I guess like dried up blood. But his face though, so like unreal and beautiful and peaceful and just, Inside those churches, we have like, how do I, it's kind of like in Fatima, you know, like the open square. That's why I look, all these spaces, imagine like a pilgrimage coming here, a big celebratory mass, and that is the altar in the back. Something to remember guys, if you're coming um, to this area, 
We're staying in Bari and then it's about a two hour ride to Puglia. Um, I can't remember the name of, of these places in particular, but two hours from there to St. Michael and then it's 30 minutes by drive here to Padebio. You know, everybody usually just goes to Padebio. We didn't even know about St. Michael. It's just, we're just so happy that we discovered it. So I'm here trying to promote it. <laughs> you know, high five for my angel crew. <laughs> Angels for me are just like, not that Padre Pio is not awesome, but I'm not very familiar with the story as I should be, you know, but, but angels, they're, they're my jam for the nth time. They're my squad. <laughs> I am so happy right now. We went through so many zigzag roads to get here. You think it's fog. You're literally up in the clouds. It really is like coming to heaven where all the angels are. The church right behind me is the church of St. Michael the Archangel. Now, anyone who knows me well, when I pray, I, you know, people pray to Jesus, to Mother Mary, to a certain saint. I'm the angels, they're my posse. I, cause I don't just pray to one, when I talk to them, I talk to them as like a whole group, like a fam now. Um, and a lot of people who come to this area, they only usually pray to Padre Pio, but here, the fact that it's named after him, the mountain, the mountain is named after St. Michael, says a lot. You actually think that the entrance is just some doorway to, to a church, but no, it's actually a stairway that goes all the way down this beautiful stairway. And it shows the cave because in that cave is actually where an apparition from um, St. Michael the Archangel, yeah, made an apparition. So inside that cave, all the way down, you can take a lift by the way, um, there's a church. There was a church that was built inside that cave. It was so beautiful. It's more like a chapel because it's not really, really big, but it's just, it's just so beautiful. And then in the back of that cave, you'll see St. Michael. And it clays in this um, enclosed in this glass, and um, I'm I'm assuming, or we're assuming, my mom and I, that that was there. The apparition was inside that specific spot. And there's also an elevator going up or down. 